Hi, this is my first video on YouTube. I'm pretty excited and I chose to do a self-portrait of, of Frida Kahlo and I'm doing it on a, a wood cigar box with acrylic paints. Um, I've been painting for and creating for about 50 years now and thought, why not? Let's bring this to YouTube and I'll be teaching on Thursdays. So Mondays I'll paint famous paintings and it's kind of like my journey through figuring out why they pick colors they picked. I kind of move things around to my style as well uh, and try to, to stay within the parameters of, of obviously the painting. And uh, my favorite painter is Frida Kahlo, so that's why I'm starting with her. Uh, a little caveat, these earrings that are little hand earrings were made by Pablo Picasso and given to Frida uh, when she did a show in Paris in 1940. So this painting is from 1940. Um, she painted it on canvas, I believe, I, I'll check for that, and with uh, oil paints. I paint in acrylic, as I mentioned before, and so let's, let's go and see what I can do. Thanks for coming and, um, and join me on this journey. I'm a little nervous, but I gotta do it. I'm going to be 61 on, on Thursday, and I promised myself I would, I would do this, and um, yeah, so um, I'm excited. I use pencil when I work on a painting. I use I use the brush. I mean the paint that I'm going to use because you're going to paint right over it anyhow. So you don't want to dig in with a pencil or put graphite on your work surface because then the graphite will leave, you know, a black residue on there and you don't want to you don't want to do that so okay so now i'm lightly putting in the shape of her head so that line right there is going to give uh the for here's the forehead right and sometimes you can even go like and block it off into shapes okay so here's one shape the side of the forehead and here's the center part okay and then her nose is going this way so we could even put a little V like that to give her the bridge. And then over here, like just like a half circle and then curve that around. And then you have, then you have the beginning of that. And then her brow, her brow is very, obviously very distinct. Frida Kahlo had a, her own unibrow. She created that on her own. It was her own look. So now I'm putting in, this has to be a little bit longer. I'm putting it along, the nose is longer. I'm putting in the eye. See, I shaped the eye right here. And then here's the beginning of the eye socket on this side. And then the brow would be over here. So again, just lightly putting all this in and then I'll define it later. Her eyeball is, is facing, um, looking right on that one. Same thing with here. So we'll just block that in. It doesn't look like anything right now but it's for me only, just to, so I, when I go to paint, I have um, something to look at. Okay, so now I'm gonna shape her, her cheekbone here. It's a little softer than that. It's not so dramatic, so I'll, I'll make that a less. So we're gonna put that in. And then under here, I just sort of make like a little circle. It gives me the, the spot for under her lips and then where the chin will, start. So what I just do is the nostril will go right here. So I'm just going to put that right in here. Again, all this is just a sketch so that I have somewhere this comes here and there's the chin. Okay, so in her ear, just put her ear in here. She doesn't have an ear showing on the other side. From the chin, we'll bring in the neckline here. There's that hand. Okay, okay so I'm gonna take this over to here. And now her, I'm just gonna lightly put this in green. This is where her robe or dress is gonna be. It's shawl, I'm not sure if it's a shawl or a dress. Okay, so we're gonna lightly place that in the green. And All right, so 
so that gives me the beginning and I know it's a little bit long on the face so I'll shorten it. I'll just go back and start to shorten. I just needed to put oh, some of the up. That's it. Okay, so now I'm going to mix first. So I'm just putting in this town right now and of course I'll change this as I go along. I just need to put in something. At, at this point I can like kind of go quickly over what we already just painted and I'll leave the eye shape, the eye part not painted, the eyeball area. Okay, so. Leave that here, coming over here. And go down her neck, just come this way. And then I'll start to shape things. The, the wood is nice to paint on. It's it's um, it's soft. I mean, it's 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 not textured well a, a lot, so that it doesn't um, it, uh, you know doesn't uh, prove a problem for painting on there. So I like it. I like painting on wood a lot. Well, I'm gonna work on the background too um, while that's drying. You can work wet, but I'm gonna let that dry up here. So I'm gonna add to the this background of what we have already but because it's more dramatic I'm adding like the greens and then I'll go back and get the sky color too she's got I'm trying to follow her colorations of how she painted this I'll throw a little bit of my own style in there but I kind of like want to see where she went with her idea with the colors. Um, as you can see she has greens and blues and uh, I think a little pink in the sky. Um, I like the fact that she stuck a green in the sky. It's kind of interesting. So what I'm doing is I'm, she has a very textured appearance to her work. So I'm going to go in various directions to recreate that. So coming this way, I'm going to grab a little pink and put that in there, some white. And so now I'll move it. And I want to get this uh, having a little bit of texture to the paint to give you uh, some of her drama. And carrying it on the other side of the box down here, because remember this is three dimensional so we can go further and carry this and become whatever. I like the fact that she had a little bit. So she carried the pink over here on the side. So what I'm doing is what's in my brush um, from here. I'm going to carry it over there. And the pink that's down here, I'll move that with some of the green blue. And you can see how it starts to model a little bit. Next, my dog is barking at whoever I walk by. Okay, so I'm going to drag some of the color, see the color that's on my brush already? I'm dragging that there because she does have a pink in that. Uh, elongated her face a little bit, but that's what's good about the sketching process because you then can go and change things around. So I have taken a little bit of the black and I'm going to start to formulate her hair. Okay, so she has, we'll put the, a lighter color on there to give her where the, there's a, a bit of a sheen to her hair. Uh, I'll do that later. So I'm just going to take some of this up around here. Uh, I'm going to stay away from the flowers because at that point uh, they will sit um, higher up on her head. And um, they really don't need to be put in there yet. So the hair will just come... She's got her hair pulled in a couple different directions, so I'm painting in this direction because it's the hair is coming to uh, t towards her face, so you know the hair follicles or hair direction um, is coming this way. So I'm painting in that direction. I'm going to bring 
this over here like that, that shape. Again, I'm looking at shapes. That helps uh, a lot. Okay, so got that blocked in. And um, this piece here. I'll do the other detailing of it later. Again, anything that needs to be fixed, say I do something that I'm not pleased with, that's what's great about acrylic is you just go right over it and fix it. Right here, the hairline that comes around like this, like around her her ear. So I'm going, I, what I did is I, I just took some of the color from skin color and, and mixed it in with the black. So, just to lighten that. Okay, so the ear comes over here. Her ear is, is more like out here, like this. So I'll repair that. I'll repaint it. So I'm gonna just do this kind of a thing. See, I'm taking these little wisps of the black, but I have the, some of the paint color of her, hair, of her skin in there too. So it just is gonna lighten it up. And then I'm gonna also take some green and blue and it's kind of what she looks like she's done here she's had this is her self-portrait and i'm just see i'm going in that direction to give her the wispiness of her hairline going in that direction and then right when you get to the top there's these little tiny wispy pieces of hair right here and this is tight there's no block there's no um space there at all further out like that So that's going to dry. This is a little further out than it needs to be. So she has, um, a, a, like on, on this side, she's incorporated a, like a orangey tone to her skin. It's, um, let me see right here. And she has high cheekbones. I, I have high cheekbones as well. I like the way she she did this orange on the side. It kind of glows. It's pretty. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna leave that. Um, Gauguin was a good one for making his colors glow. Uh, when you see his people, their skin tones really had a beautiful glow tone to them, which was really beautiful. We'll do a Gauguin painting. We're gonna go down the list of famous painters from various time periods and, and create their paintings. Okay, so I'm gonna move all around the face. Working on her ear now. Her ear is lighter on that side. She's created this lighter color. And um, it's sort of flat, like right here. So I'm gonna try to flatten it on her skin that she's put in there. But I wanna put more of it the buildup of the collar. So I'm gonna work on, you know, more of it, all of it at once, and then, then you start to refine things. It's funny that when you do a self-portrait, what, how you view yourself, um, but she did quite a few, so she, she knows what she looks like in her eyes. And you know, obviously she's looking in a mirror. She could have done it by memory. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do that. And then I'm gonna come back here and put some color under here and build her chin up with some, it's like rounded over here. That ear goes there. And I'm gonna look at shapes too. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do more of the work on the forehead here. I'm shaping, see, putting that line there gives you the beginning of the forehead. 
and she's got a highlight on this side too and then she's taken a lot of um, a, a um, brownie orange color and put that right in here she has a little green in there too let me get some green I'm going to mix that in there so it's not so pronounced. Okay, so that comes over here like that. I'll have to go back and check on this. You know, you go back and forth tomorrow and look and see what I'm missing as far as her colors go. You know, I could get the painting dead on, but the colors could be not quite hers. I'm gonna do that. When you're shaping the eye, and she's got like a, almost like a little bit of a bulbous eye. Her eyes, um, like kind of appears to be a little bit puffy on one side, or on the side, or actually puffy and just puffy in general. So I, what I did is I painted that around there and I'll paint it underneath so it, then it starts to give you that eyeball effect here so and then I'll put this painting with paint that's on my brush going in this direction so I'm going the same direction as her um, hairline and then she's got a piece of she's got this paint that kind of goes over here above her ear drag some of that over here since it's already in my brush. I'm going to put, lightly put her lips in to start with. So I'm mixing orange, red, some of the color that was there for her face. And I will She's got like that little, the lip that comes down, the piece of the lip that comes down. All right, and uh, she has a little bit of a curve. She's put a little fake smile on her. Look, it looks pouty. Cause I just place these things in and then I move things around like everybody does. Uh, as you saw, I just lightly put in the basic shapes and now I'm putting in colors and you know, I'm not going to be able to follow her entire, uh, it would take me forever to figure out how she did her palette. So I'm following the basic palette and then sticking my own colors and my own spin on her. But I'm going to try to stay, you know, as close to the painting as far as um, the theme of it and how she has it, her things laid out. So that part will stay pretty close to her original ideas. But as far as her palette, I, like I said, I have to kind of do my own thing with it. Um, when you put these colors together so you can see the glowing of uh, the orange and um, I got a little higher, make this higher, a little higher up on that. Um, it, it just looks really, really nice when you put these colors on, like the, her darker colors and then I put a little bit more of a glow. She has a more of a white up around there but I put that orange on there and I think that really looks nice with um, the dark colors to make it a little bit more, um, you know, bold and brighter. I'll put things into the refrigerator just to hold the colors. These are expensive. If you start going through um, days of not painting and leaving paints out uh, that are going to dry up, then it's expensive. So I tried to be, um, you know, cognizant of things, details like that. So I have that in there. Um, I'm gonna work on her ear for a minute. I didn't work on that earlier. So I'm just putting in, I just, what I do is I just go look for all the shapes. So um, that, you know, that's how I fill things in. Colors. I've said this before that I use uh, purple. Um, this green, Tooker's green, purple and red, you can get a really good 
dark with that, but so I'm gonna put her lips in my face. So I, I went off camera to um, place in some leaves and I just wanted to figure out how I was gonna handle the sides of the boxes. So I'm putting another layer of leaves in and um, I'll, I'll continue this muddy, or this muddled uh, bluish gray, greeny color coming down between them and get a little bit darker in areas. So right now um, I kind of up uh, do a little blocking of some of the color uh, um, on the leaves. So, um, let's see, this is good. I'm going to uh, put in the color of her her dress or shawl right here um, and bring it down. Uh, I think it, it, like midway, it, it kind of has a swerve to it. So I'll bring it down further into the box and then bring the leaves up up towards it so up towards the gown or the shawl uh, and then blend them together so that they kind of the shawl goes behind the leaves so it'll just become a composition so I'm just you know using as I said her, her the basic idea of her painting and then um, and then do the detail on here and then I'll also, you know, in the end I'll uh, do a, a, a glaze on it or um, a poly on it and make it really semi-gloss. I like a sheen on everything. I, all my paintings have some sort of a, a poly on them, whether it be an oil base or a, I think I use a water base almost on everything though. I shouldn't say oil because the oil does change it to like a, an amber color when you use an oil uh, uh, varnish or whatever and I, because I paint in water base you don't even have to varnish I just like things that are shiny so this is going to come around here, the back of her like this what I did is I met, mixed uh, yellow this bright this darkish red yellow and green the hookers green together to get this color so that'll be the base of that and then I'll go and make the the folds in the, with the hookers green and that's such a great color. You can use it for, I use it in the base, the background. You can see that the hooker's green is in here with yellow and a brighter green that I, I placed back here. So I will use a little combination of everything and then add the pink back in and the bright blue, the brute blues to give it kind of more of that drama behind her head. So I'll need to do like a two coats to get it to be nicer, like a, right now because I have water in it it's more of a thinned out look so it's not opaque enough mm. for my taste. Open the box and you want to finish things off. The inside will be painted one color or maybe a couple colors inside you know mixed around to make it interesting but you also want to always take into account everything should be neat. So you look for details like up here everything I mean everything counts it's part sort of the painting. I'm going to put her daisy in right here. A lot of times I use my um, my my pinky to hold my the brush up off of you know away from it, but I'm I'm using the pinky to it's like a um, little helper to keep it the brush solid. You know when you're going around to do something without touching things. All right, so we're kind of just coming around here. I should have put some base color behind her because now you have to fill it in. You kind of always want to put your colors that you're going to use behind. Behind. It's more work to do painting in between colors. Okay, so that's blocked in there. Okay, so she has like a, a little bit of a rose sort of a shape flower in there. So I'm going to grab some of the yellow that I just used and mix that a little bit up with that for my base. Her flowers are more like, um, they're, they're, I shouldn't, I'm not going to say they're crude because they're not crude. I mean, she's, again, she knows more about painting than Oliver now because of she's a master, but they're just basically a lot of shapes 
they're not um, realistically painted out. She, um, on this particular flower, the next set of flowers, she's put a little blue in them, purpley blue, so I'm just going to blot, blob them in now and then add the color, the purpley blue afterwards, but this is similar to her color. I'm working wet, see how the, some of the white is coming off the brush, it's cool. You see how the blue is popping through from the painting below, that, that's, I think that's nice. Let me take a little liberty and add flowers here and there, but I'm basically trying to stay in the, con the composition she used. In the sky here. And they're not in the group, they're sort of on their own, so they make a really nice a dropping effect on there. I think it's gentle looking. Okay, so I'm blocking those in and up with the little green stems, and she has them over here. I'm um, balancing my hand and I'm painting with on um, my other hand so that I don't lean into the wet paint. It just really adds to how she envisioned. Your eye starts to look all over at it and it has a lot of interest. Now I'm going to bring the rest of it on the top here. So it won't go to waste that she has more flowers up here. I'm going to stick a little bit more of that plaque behind those flowers because, you know, that'll pop it out a little bit. And it's her hair. See, I'm still working all over the whole painting. We just did flowers, we did a little bit of hair, and now we're doing some eye work. I'll let this dry and then I'll go back. Um, I'm going to grab some of that black and work on her eyebrows. Her eyebrows are so much her signature, so I want to make sure I get them as nicely as possible done. I'm going to do these little tiny hairs. I need to take some of the water off the brush. So I'm following the shape here. Going this way. But she has hair coming this way as well. So it's instead of going the brow goes like this. It's also coming forward. It's like beating back around to meet them. And that's a very thin line. And she's got, there's a little line between, see I'm gonna do this, between the edge of her eye lid, I mean eye, bottom of her lid, or whatever that's, pieces. And then I'm gonna just take this uh, eye line, eyelash like that. I don't want to get it too overdone because she doesn't have that in there. And see that little piece of line that we gave there? We're going to get these little eyelashes. wet and just stick them right in there. Stick that there for now. This one is that color. And once we get the base colors, you can go back and detail them because they're going to need two coats. That follows her shawl. You don't want to leave any of the blue showing because then it looks like it's almost white. I want to leave that like that so that will dry. I'm going to bring that point up. So I'm going to add more of that brownie color in there and try to get that to finish up so I can put the her hand in there, her hand earring. Um, I worked on her eyes, her mouth, put more color in here, uh, brought those highlights into her hair. need to bring her eyebrow while I have the black out a little bit further. I, I um, paint a little bit more color in there. Okay, see, I'm going to curve that around because she really does have that curved around. She has a little blue on that. I'll put some blue in there. I'm just going to bring these this way. The other ones will come up. The, this, the other leaves will come up this direction, but right now I'm going to just follow this right here. Do that. She also has kind of taken the green and outlined these, these petals with the green, so I'm just going to sort of use her idea. And I think I'm going to add purple. 
do some of the defining of the leaves before I get too far with with the white over here. So I'm going to do some green in that blue, which is starting to get a little bit um, dried out. A little bit of white. Okay. Mix them together, the green and the blue and the white. See what we have. This leaf has got a lot of the blue in it on the edges and actually has more white. Let me add the white, white here. Okay, I'm gonna come right around like that. So I'm gonna just do it basically using her idea. Put a little bit of my coloring and take this leaf and go like this and bring it down into point on this side on the edge here. So and you want to make sure that's nice and neat. Finish this over here. She has that white leaf. Now I like that. So I'm gonna do a lot of it has white, but my my brush had a lot of um, of the green in it. So I'm going at this angle. So I'm coming from this angle because she's got it at an angle, and it's going to go off on the side of the box. I'm gonna dry brush it because I already have the base coat in there. The dry brushing is grabbing the paint without putting water in there. I just grabbed a little water because it was too dry. I'm gonna a little blue. Enter some pink in there already. And she's got the green, so I'm just gonna come right up to the little hair where she's got her flowers. And just sort of scrub sideways a little bit without ruining your brush. So what's in my brush is what I'm gonna finish this up with. I could grab a little white Move some of the colors with the hand comes like um there's like a little half circle semi circle right there and then this is her earring pinky there put long fingers on it. all the same, same same length. We'll outline it in a little bit. So we need the contrast of the red and the purple. So doing is like sort of following what would be with her um the folds of the fabric. I'm going to just finish it there because the bottom we're gonna paint it a solid color. So that in a, in a dark color I think so that it keeps it um neater and here i think i'm going to take this color over here as well and then we'll use that and just use this wet a little bit of a contrast so the red is going to give it the darkness that um, she seemingly would have put black in her to make her dark side um or you know when she went to go do a dark part i'll either use the red or the purple and i actually think i might put a little purple into the top here. Coming over to the top, so I want to make sure it's very neat on the edges. Yeah. Oops. So now we have all the edges that need to dry and the top inside the top needs to dry. It's nice all to dry. Um, okay, so come to detail. Take the purple and just do it solid purple. And I'm holding my hand because I can't push down on this top and I can't lean my hand on that top. So I'm just going to go back and outline. I see that I didn't outline all of this little flower, these little flowers here. Just 
doing the purple underneath it a little bit. Same thing with this. And I'll probably take a little bit of the darker green and just give it a You just made a brown instead of just taking making a brown, a brown. So this is more colorful. And the stick sort of meanders throughout here. So we're gonna draw this and I need to add a little bit more yellow to brighten that. Okay, so the stick sort of goes like this and it's it's not a straight line so it kind of curves and it's this is where you can see the layers and I learned this and I do it on my own paintings is you start seeing how especially on her work there's multiple layers so you have the back leaves right and then the forward ones here this white one overlaps those and then the white flower overlap those and then the brown twiggy kind of things will overlap that so they're all gonna sit on top of that background she's always gonna be forward of that whole composition but now you have that third layer and that's just that's what really makes yeah. the color there the color there it balances it as well okay so there's beige she has beige leaves up here too but I don't have the room for those so now We're going to put in uh, her, um, let's see if I can, I think I put, it, I put the, I put her um, robe too high or her shawl too high. I'm going to come from here and bring her these thorns, her necklace th of thorns. So I'm making it a little bit light, but I'll darken it. I just need to start with something when I mean, this was in the brush. So I, I'm coming back and going over that that leaf and around. So, and I'll detail these. And what that does is it splits up some of the skin there. It's nice. What she's doing, done is she's put one in between, like, so that one goes there. And to sort of show a little defining on this corner here, just to make it different. A little definition here. Okay. And on this side, because it's going to be a different color, I'll just bring this over here like this. Just to be different, I'm going to outline it in that white on that side. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of this white. It's it's in the brush, so I'm gonna I'm sort of dry brushing it right now. And taking it onto the side here. Cause I'll it, I bend it around so it's on two sides. And just do that. I'm gonna make that whole color like that and same thing here. Sort of change a little bit of these. I think I'm gonna add the green more to more green to it. So we're gonna add just a little orange and red and green in here. Just to change up things and because the orange is in other places on the box, that'll look nice. So I'm gonna leave a little of the green. Twig, so that'll break up that whole thing again. This is a different leaf, so let's put um, a little yellow and white on that one. Just to make this even a little bit more different. And then I'll put the, I'll put the, um, kind of, if I leave this in like a little block out look, it'll have like its own little veins in it just because I'm leaving the green of the, the leaf there. And this one becomes even brighter. And then of course I'm gonna be forced to. So what I'm just doing now is just taking these colors and dragging them off from the edge out and do this kind of effect. You see how, what happens is the whole, your eyeball will start to go around the entire thing. It, it doesn't, you don't want it to pop and stay just on that one or this one or that. You want it to move equally so to make it like that and 
sort of taking colors that are similar and like just putting them in corners or I guess I'll just do it here and there. Something like this, just even if it's a little bit. With the twiggy pieces and then I put the white flowery dots of the light flowers around the sides there. So you can see it's all completed and then when you look at the top, it's the top of her head. So we're really pretty much done. The back is still drawing. It's, it's purple, red, and blue. Um, so I'm just going to put this and lean it against. Actually, I'll put that behind it so I can keep it from falling. Let's see if you can see this coming here. So right here, we're going to put in the banner um, in white. Oops. Um, Yeah. I'm just going to put it in white right now because um, I'll do other colors later, but just to block it in and I really need to, okay, so I'm going to stick it, it's just going to be the, the hand, it's like a, you can hand with a little bit of lace at the end of it, it's, a, oh, I guess it's maybe a glove, a hand with a glove, yeah, okay. and then I'll add white back in. Here. Some blue. A shadow in here. Okay, so right when she's grabbing it there on that side, you can see that here too. So I want to go right against this hand with a dark blue. And that'll add even a nicer. And I'm going to get rid of that red. So we made it through the video and I'm pretty excited uh, that uh, now I can share Mondays with you doing new paintings. Some of them will be my style where I paint things that I picked out a scene or a commission or just anything that it can be painted on. And as I mentioned, famous paintings as well. So if you wouldn't mind uh, liking, subscribing and hitting the bell when I come out with new videos, classes are on Thursday. I will also come out with shorts where I do technique videos and show you if before class and they'll do downloads for you to have as well um, that you can check the downloads uh, that go, will go and coincide with that because technique is really important when you're learning um, to do drawing and painting. Um, thanks for coming, I really appreciate this, this and I appreciate um, building an audience. Thanks. <laughs>